Happy day one of Tome Topolathon. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. The readathon starts at midnight tonight, but I actually don't have any other books to read right now. I'm not currently reading any other books. I started one yesterday and then I realized, like I started it last night, I got like three chapters in and then I realized by the time I was done with this readathon I wouldn't know what the book was about anymore. So I actually decided to bring one of the books with me to work tonight and I am going to play games on like my tablet or something in between reading because I don't want to read too much of the book right off the bat. I want to obviously save some for the readathon. So I did bring one with me and I might start it tonight um, before midnight, but I'm going to mainly focus on not reading it, if that makes any sense. I don't know. It sort of feels like cheating, but I know a lot of people actually do this. But anyway, the book that I brought with me is The Beneath the Scarlet Sky. I have been wanting to read this book for a really long time. If you guys saw my TBR for the readathon, this book has been recommended to me a few times. I completely had forgotten that it was recommended to me. It seems like a lifetime ago that it was. Um, and also this book has a bajillion reviews and most of them are five star. So I want to start this tonight. I am kind of nervous about the readathon because I work a ton. Like my days that I work are Thursday through Sunday and it's like 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done because I mean I might get a lot of reading done but I don't know how much of it I'm gonna get to vlog but I'm gonna take every chance I can to vlog for you guys so I hope you appreciate that um but yeah this is the start of my day this is day one of the readathon for me so I thought I would throw this in here although like I said I'm not gonna try to read a whole lot of it tonight but we shall see this book is 513 oh no it is 509 pages, so just over 500. But like I said, it's a book I've been really wanting to read, so I think I'll be able to read it pretty quickly. Um, I told my husband that basically I was going to be MIA for a couple of weeks while I attempted to do this readathon, so that's fun. But yeah, that's it for my updates. I will update you guys tonight when I get home. I am I have to get up super early tomorrow. Tomorrow's like a crazy day for me, so we will see. I will update you guys tomorrow morning when I wake up and let you guys kind of know what's going on and what I'm thinking of it so far. Um, if I don't update you guys tonight, we shall see, but I will see you guys later. Hey guys, good morning. It is day two of the readathon. I am in my kitchen. I just made myself some tea. I have a few things that I have to get done this morning. I need to take the trash out of my office. Um, I need to water my plants, things like that. Um, and then I'm gonna get to reading before work. I did not upload a video today, as you guys may have noticed, I don't know. I'm not uploading a video today because I'm not really feeling the footage that I filmed. Um, so I don't wanna put that up. Uh, not because I'm a perfectionist, but just because I like being proud of the content I'm making. So I'm gonna drink my tea, maybe catch up on booktube a little bit, and then uh, read before I have to get ready to go to work. So yeah, I will check in with you guys in a little bit, although I do need to sit down and kind of give you guys an overall of how I'm feeling about what I've read of the book so far. My office is almost clean, I just need to take trash out. Um, but I wanted to sit down and go over with you guys what I've read so far. Because I haven't read a whole lot, but what I've read, as you can tell, I've had some thoughts about. This is Beneath the Scarlet Sky. You guys know this is what I started for the readathon. Um, so far, I'm actually really liking it. There's only one thing about it that I haven't liked so far, but the I really like all of the characters. They're not super developed yet, but I'm only, I think, like 70 some pages in right now. Um, so I'm not that far, so there isn't like a whole lot of character development, even with Pino, the main character. I really like the story is pretty active from the beginning. I was worried because it was such a large book and I was also worried because it's more of a historical fiction that it would be kind of uh, slow going, but it's not. It's actually pretty intense um, right off the bat. 
uh, but I am so far really, really liking it. I have a lot of thoughts about, um, you know, kind of what's happening in the story. Like I said, the only thing that I don't like is Pino, our main character, is a little bit girl crazy, which is fine, like it's whatever. But So he's girl crazy, but he sees and meets this girl named Anna one day and asks her to the movies. And most girls always say no to Pino, but she says yes, and so he's sneaks out, like fakes being sick to his mom and, and his dad, and sneaks out to the theater. And while they're at the theater, he gets stood up, and then the bomb bombs start falling and actually fall on the theater. And, you know, Pino and his brother go home. And the thing is, like, he's so girl crazy, but for some reason, for the rest of the book from what I've read, and I think that happens in, like, the second chapter or something, from that point on, all he can think about is Anna, but he's also saying, like, he wants to date other, like, wants to meet other girls or whatever, and I'm just, I'm so confused, like, that's the only thing about the book that I don't like, is he is so girl crazy that you think he would just move on, but the author goes on and on about how he can't stop thinking about Anna, how she stood out from other people, and I don't really understand why, because he, he kind of just feels like that about everybody. So, so far, that's the only part of this book that I don't like, but I really like the war aspect of it. I really, really love the way that it's written. The writing style in this book is so good. It's just, it's so descriptive and I don't know, it's just, it's really easy to read and it doesn't feel super bogged down. Um, I really like it. Let me see if I can find... I know I marked some. Essentially, I just really like the way the world is developed as well. Um, let's see. When he describes certain things, it just sounds really, really beautiful and I really like that. Like when he's describing uh, terrain mostly, I think that's what I really like. Uh, I think it just, it just, it makes me want to be there. This whole book is very beautiful so far, like even with the bombs dropping, it's really beautiful. So if you're into really pretty settings, I think you like this book as well. But I'm excited to see a little bit more character development and see where the book goes from here. Like I said, I'm only on page 69, so I haven't read that much. I'm not that far into it, but I am bringing it with me to work today. I don't know if I'll be able to do updates while I'm at work, so this might be more of a long update, but yeah. I guess that's it. I will see you guys when I'm able to update you next. All right, what is up? I just got to work. Well, I didn't just get to work. I got to work probably like 30 minutes ago. Um, but I got sucked into YouTube videos because Colleen Ballinger is not a YouTuber that I've normally been particularly interested in, but recently I've been really interested in her videos because I think she's like kind of down to earth and she's like one of the OG YouTubers. And I started watching her videos this morning and got sucked into them when I got to work because I like to kind of leave for work a little bit early and then come and read in my car and relax because I notice when I'm at home, there's always something that I need to do. So I'm always working on something instead of just reading and relaxing and just like taking in my morning. If I am at home, if I'm like, you know, at work, obviously I like want to do like work stuff when I'm at work and I want to do like personal projects when I'm at home. So I like to take a little bit of time in the morning, probably like an hour and a half to two hours, sometimes three hours before my shift just to come in early and sit in my car and read. And that's what I did this morning. So I've been here for quite a while. I am not okay with the weather. It is 91 degrees out today and I'm literally melting. Um, I am not somebody who does well in heat like this. Um, having grown up in Alaska, I never experienced heat like this, so it's a bit much for me. But right now what I'm actually going to do is just settle down and set like a 15 minute timer and just try to read some of my book, maybe like a 10 minute timer and try to read some of my book. Um, we'll see if I'm able to get that done. But that is the goal for now. I've been kind of sectioning off um, reading and other things. Like I have my tablet with me and I'll read for 20 minutes and then uh, stop and play like a game or something on my tablet just to keep my mind going because as much as I love reading, I can't just continuously read unless I'm like super interested in a book and usually that happens about the halfway point. So I thought I would just take some time right now and get some reading done for like 10 minutes or so and then I can either keep going if I want to or I can move on to something else, maybe go into work a little bit early, but I have my tea, I have my book, I am covered in sunscreen, I forgot to mention that. 
everything is really slippery uh, but I'm going to read a little bit and then check in with you guys and let you know what I am thinking of it. Getting ready to go inside, but I kind of wanted to show you guys how I've been marking my book. I'm on page 73 right now, but there are a couple of pages. Um, this is what my normal highlights look like, so this is something that has to do with the plot of the book. If my camera will focus, there you go. So this is about there's a, a sometimes a pastor preacher like a father that sends Pino on these hikes after he's sent away from his family because of the bombings and I wanted to know why. So I've literally been highlighting and writing in my books and I don't know what's wrong with me but I didn't realize it was such a big deal until my husband noticed this page last night. I have completely ruined my book. Ruined my, ruined my book. A lot of people feel that way but I don't feel that way. So I've been taking like actual notes. This is something that I don't like about the book. This is something that I want to focus on. On. It's more about Pino being like girl crazy and why this girl Anna that he meets is so important um, And then these are obviously plot um, Things that are happening. This is writing style. I love this quote so so much um, There's a bombing in the town that they live in and I love that the author kind of made this connection he said as a train rolled back into Milan shortly after dawn the next day, black scrolls of smoke unraveled, twisted, and curled above the city. When they left the train and went out into the streets, Pino saw the physical difference between those who had fled the city and those who endured the onslaught. <clears throat> the part that I really like about this is he said, explosive terror had bowed, bowed, had bowed, good job Jess, the survivors' shoulders, emptied their eyes, and broken the set of their jaws. I loved that, that he equated um, how they were feeling in a sense of, like, not just that a bomb had been dropped but he kind of made it sound like explosive terror like I just I don't know I just really love that like equating their mental burden like what had happened to an actual bomb being dropped I just love that that he used like that kind of symbolism I'm really really liking this book and then obviously pink are four characters so this is where they finally talk about Pino's dad's name is Michelle and I want to have that available later um, but this is not too far into the book this is 45 pages in so it's not too spoilery for you guys to see but this is kind of what I've been doing with my book throughout the entire thing like there's just a ton of highlights in here and I'm gonna go ahead and say it guys it's super satisfying in a way and you're not really like destroying the book but yeah um, that's it for this update though that's it for this update though I am far too hot sitting out in my car so I'm actually gonna go into work and make some lunch and possibly get started on my shift early so I will check in with you guys probably tonight when I get home I am actually recording this update on my camera because my phone is full. Well, it's not full anymore. I actually dumped it um, and put the videos that I'd been filming for the updates on my computer. But I just want to update you guys on my camera because it's a lot easier because this stuff can just sit on my SD card and I can just really easily move it over to my computer. I don't need to like hook up anything or anything like that. Um, but yeah, the last time I left you guys was yesterday and I have to be honest, I'm really struggling. Not because I'm not interested in the book I'm reading, not because I am not wanting to do this or I'm in like a slump or anything. I'm struggling because I'm not feeling the best. I... Like I said yesterday, I'm still feeling pretty sick. Um, I did lay in bed yesterday and read for a little while, but also like my husband was home and I just kind of wanted to like be comfortable and spend time with him. I got a little bit of work done, but most of the day I just spent kind of like laying around and relaxing and not really doing anything. And you would think that that's like the greatest time to read, but for me it's like, I want to play video games or I want to like watch something or you know whatever and we ended up also going grocery shopping which took a lot out of me. I was actually walking through the parking lot and 
I'm always cold, so I was wearing like, my legs are never cold, so I was wearing shorts, but I had on a t-shirt and then a sweatshirt on over it. It was 91 degrees yesterday, so halfway through the parking lot, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know if it was from heat, because I've never really gotten, um, like a heat stroke, or, you know, it have been too hot that it makes me feel like I'm gonna pass out. So I don't know what it was, but he ended up having to drive home because I was so uncomfortable. Um, and then when we got home, I just laid around and didn't do anything. Um, I try to kind of like change my space around when I don't feel very good. So I did move a few things just in my space to kind of like freshen it up. And I feel a little bit better this morning. My throat, I don't know if you can tell, sounds like crap because um, I have really bad heartburn all the time and that's something that I'm trying to like get under control and so I just have like a lot of damage to my throat from my heartburn so it makes me sound a little fuzzy in the morning but I'm gonna update you guys on now that that's out of the way on what I did get to read yesterday I am like I said before I'm really liking this book I think it's super interesting I think that the author did a really good job of making the writing very simple but making you care for the characters. Essentially the part that I'm at is kind of what I think the basis, where the basis of the book is going to come from. Um, the Jews are officially being like rounded up and hunted and killed in the book and it's, it's very obviously heartbreaking but it's also very interesting because I don't know much about the Nazi occupation in Italy which you'd think I would because my family most of my family is from Germany like my birth father's side of the family like my oma my aunt my uncle my birth dad they're all from Germany and my oma was I think three or four when World War II happened but on the flip side the rest of my family is actually from Italy um most of my family are, they stick very closely to their roots, I guess is what I was trying to say. They're very proud of their nationality. Uh, you know, my Oma, before she got Alzheimer's, she used to fly back to Germany all the time. My Nona and my grandpa fly to Italy every winter to escape Ohio. Um, you know, so they're still there in, in, in the community and in the culture. They still have houses in Germany and Italy. But I, for some reason, had never really taking the time to ask them what life was like during World War II in Italy. So this is kind of opening my eyes because like I said in my TBR, I really like um, learning about it for some reason. I think that it's super intriguing. Um, it is obviously very cruel. You, you know, you kind of have to understand that there's like people who, I don't know, like we all have that friend who really likes the serial killer shows and really likes, you know, like the CSI and you know, those have murder and death in them, but for some reason, I always feel really awkward when I tell people that I think that World War II is very interesting. I used to want to be a history professor, um, so, but I just have like, I realized that I was only really interested in that portion of history. I mean, I like history, but you know, only that part. So it's, it's really cool to, and, and I know it's fiction, it's technically historical fiction, but it is based on true events. I don't know if you knew that. I don't know if I said that, but it's based on true events. So it's like, you're getting a little bit of history at the same time. And I think that's super cool. And I'm at the part now, though, where Pino, the main character, um, he is sent away by his father to go to these, this, like, camp thing. I don't know what it is. It's like a monastery, essentially, that is in the Alps. And they are right next to, oh, where is it? Switzerland, I believe. And what the pastor there, the father there, decides that he needs his help with is he needs him to transport Jews across to, I believe it's Switzerland, because Switzerland was neutral during the war, um, to safety essentially. And I thought that that was so cool. And it's it's really interesting because the, the monastery, I think that's what it's called, where they are, actually has his younger brother Mimo and it also has a bunch of other younger boys. And they start kind of teaching the boys how to make this journey because there are these obviously like mountains and things and you know valleys that they have to travel through and so they're all kind of training to make that journey and it's really cool and I think it's it's also cool because you're learning like a coming of age story in a very tumultuous time and in a very different way because he um, is obviously he's 17 but I believe in the rest of the book he's like 18, 19 so he doesn't get much older. Um, I, from what I've read of the book, I could totally be wrong. I'm only like 110 pages into the book, but um, I like learning 
about what it was like for them. And I think the really cool part about this is that Pino's still alive and he's working with, I think I said this yesterday, Tom Holland to do the, the miniseries show that they're doing. And I just think that's really cool that they're working together to do that. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at uh, with life right now, essentially. Um, not much is happening. I am really excited to have a few days off and really excited to like binge read and just relax. <clears throat> But, I mean, how much of that I'm really going to get done, I don't know. I'm going to start kind of planning my days a little bit, like the time for my days that I have. I need to start planning that because I haven't gotten to spend a whole lot of time with my husband and between work and other things. So I'm going to start planning, you know, certain times during the day, like an hour to do this, an hour to do that. Um, like you guys saw this morning, I worked on blog stuff for about an, about half an hour just to kind of catch up on that a little bit but now I'm actually going to relax before I need to get ready to go to work I need to figure out some bill stuff real quick but yeah I guess that is it for this update I'm going to try to update you guys tonight when I get home from work I am not gonna make promises for that anymore though because usually when I come home from work I'm so tired or I have so much that I need to do or my husband's asleep and I don't want to wake him up because my bedroom or my bedroom my office is right here my bedroom is right across the hall so um, I don't like vlogging at night because one you can't hear me and two he can hear me and I feel really bad I don't want to wake him up so I'll try to update you tonight maybe I'll update you guys downstairs where he can't really hear me but yeah that is it for this update and I will check in with you guys either tonight when I get home from work if I can swing it or I will check in with you guys tomorrow morning. Hey guys, good morning and what's up? Um, I was looking back at the footage that I had from the last time I updated you guys and I realized that it was like in and out of focus so hopefully it focuses today. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, this is just a vlog, I gotta go with it. Um, but today is the 4th of July. It has been a few days since I've updated you guys. Um, <clears throat> my throat has gotten pretty bad and I wasn't not bad to the point where I couldn't talk. I still filmed on Monday, but I've also just been really lazy and not really doing anything, like not doing anything that's even worth vlogging like pretty much at all. Um, my days off are Monday through Wednesday, so Monday I just filmed and edited and then hung out with my husband and didn't really do anything. And then yesterday I, um, just hung out. I went to lunch with a friend and with my parents <clears throat> and then we went and walked around a park and I've been feeling very anxious the last two days and then um, yesterday when we were at the park in a period of about 10 minutes I had two panic attacks and it's the first panic attacks I've had in probably like five months, four or five months. Like the, I've had like minor ones but these were like really big ones and so yeah, I was going to update you guys last night because I read a lot, but honestly, like, if you have anxiety, you know I was so exhausted <laughs> after having those panic attacks that I just, I didn't really want to do anything. Like, I came home and um, we hung out for a little bit and then I worked on some stuff and then I laid on the couch and read until like 2 o'clock in the morning. So, I wasn't just, I just wasn't really feeling like updating and like talking, which is normal. And natural and people are allowed to feel that way <laughs> I know you guys understand but I also realized that I'm wearing the same shirt that I was wearing in my last update I think and if it is I would like to say that it's clean but it's probably not I just like take off my night shirt and set it on my dresser and then when I wake up in the morning I like put it back on and kind of like it's like sort of just what I wear around the house I guess so I'm really bumming it up the last two days like I'm just like so tired and so like emotionally exhausted. But I wanted to update you guys on the book and what I am thinking of it so far. It is 4th of July today. 
Um, so we're not going to be doing much. I know we're going to go to like commercials and kind of walk around and then I know we're going to go to Half Price Books and see if they have anything. Um, sometimes they do like 4th of July sales so we'll see. But I'm still reading Beneath the Scarlet Sky right now. I intend on finishing it tonight. I'm about halfway through right now. I am on page 281 so I'm a little over halfway. There's 500 and some odd pages in this. Let's see. There are 509 pages. Um, this book is not bad by any means. It's very, very good. But there are certain things about it that I just don't like. Um, it's written very well, but it's written pretty plainly. Um, I'm having trouble connecting with Pino as a main character. Um, obviously, I am a woman and he's a male character, so there's certain things that he talks about that I don't necessarily care about. It is really cool, though, because... The further along we get into the story, however, he's, at one point in time he falls in love with a girl named Anna just like on sight and like a tiny conversation with her and then later on in the book, like a year or two later, he actually sees her again and they kind of reconnect and sort of start a romance, which you knew was going to happen in this book. It was kind of like, you know, described in the synopsis of it anyway or the description of it. But the circumstances with which they get back together is actually kind of cool because he becomes the driver, which is the point of the book, he becomes the driver for um, this big like war general essentially, like one of Hitler's right hand men, and she is the like live-in maid essentially for his mistress. So that's kind of how they reconnect. and. It's really cool. Um, I think the story is really, really interesting. Like I said before, I'm loving the, the like Italy's perspective, like Italy's point of view on the war and what was happening there. Um, it's really hard at times to read this because people are finding out that he's he's technically a Nazi because he joined the Nazi party in an effort to stay safe, which I understand why his parents did that because I don't know if you remember me talking about it in choosing my TBR. I wasn't sure how they planned on keeping him safe by forcing him to join the Nazi party. But it's because he was supposed to enlist and I guess if they don't enlist like before, like if they don't choose to enlist before, they um, are sent to the fascist army, the Italian side of the army, and most of them are being sent to the front lines because Italy at the time is Nazi occupied. Um, so like Mussolini is just sort of like a figurehead but the Nazis and the Fuhrer kind of control him. So his parents wanted him to join the Nazi party so that he would be more safe and they had him join a, a part of the army where you could they just like built stuff but there was an accident and then that's how he becomes the driver so it's really cool <clears throat> oh my god my every time I talk my voice just like I can feel in my throat um it's very achy but so far I'm really enjoying the storyline um I okay so I'm like 300 pages in and I have to say like it's touted as him being a driver for this guy but he's only been doing that for the last like 50 pages like half of this book is just him um, getting out of Milan and going to that monastery and you know fighting with his brother and like reconnecting with his brother and him learning to want to help people and you know it, it's mostly that so I would say that this is it's definitely not the, the main thing of this book and I do like it's sort of in a very weird way like a coming of age story um, I would never in a million years want this to be my coming of age story but it is really freaking cool and I'm gonna be finishing this tonight and then starting on the sculptor hopefully or I'm gonna get a hold of Rhiannon and see if she wants to start her dark duet because I really want to read it <laughs> I really really want to read it um, but so far I am liking this book. I don't, unless the ending is crazy, I don't think this is actually going to be a 5 star read for me. I think it'll be closer along the line of 4 stars because the writing is very, very simple. Um, it's still good. It, like I said, it's not bad by any means, but it doesn't have the, there's it's just, there's something missing about it. And I'm trying to figure out what that could be. Um, the only other thing that really bugs me is Pino's relationship with, uh, Anna. I don't like that at all. Um, like for example, uh, he had barely like talked to her at all and there's a point where he says, this is 45 pages and he said, Pino felt like the world had gone mad and he grew depressed that he hadn't seen Anna in three months. You literally talked to her like once. Um, 
there's later on in the book where he was talking about like meeting another girl and he said she was dreadfully shy and would hardly look at Pino who wanted to like her but he kept thinking of Anna. He knew it was crazy to think about her at all. He talked to her all of three minutes and hadn't seen her in almost four months and she'd stood him up and yet he'd had faith he'd seen Anna be again. She'd become his fantasy he'd clung to, a story he told himself whenever he was lonely or uncertain about his future. Why? <laughs> the thing about this is too, um, this is based on, it's historical fiction, so Pino is a real person. Pino exists. Pino Lella is, like, still alive to this day, like, so I'm wondering how much of this is truth and how much of it is fiction. I kind of want to look into Pino after I read this book and kind of see, because first off, what he did was completely badass, and second of all, I need to know, like, what is actually, like, is he that girl crazy? Because he's so girl crazy, which kind of makes sense because Italy they're known for being lovers, um, which I'm, uh, I can 100% agree with because my family's from there and that's how all of them are. But yeah, that's probably it for this update. I'm gonna try to get out of my slump and just go and do something. I'm feeling very... Yesterday I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to like leave the house because... leave the house today because I'm feeling like crap. But or I was feeling like crap yesterday, but I seem to be doing a little bit better. So I'm going to get out of my house and then hopefully come home tonight and finish this. I will probably update you guys tomorrow because <clears throat> I, don't know, I don't really want to update you at night because like I said before, my husband is like sleeping and I'm kind of loud and I don't want to wake him up. So that is it for this update and I promise the next time you see me I will be wearing a different set of clothes that aren't the clothes that I've literally been living in for the last three days but I'll see you guys a little bit later. Hello! I didn't update you guys anymore yesterday because we kind of went out and did a couple of little things like what did we do? We went to like Half Price Books and went to Marshall's. I was having, I've, I've been having this like very anxious weekend like I told you guys in the last update and I'm starting to think that I get like this when I'm on my period because I have endometriosis so mine is a little bit longer a little bit heavier this is probably TMI to all my male followers but you know what we fucking have them I don't care <laughs> um but I am starting to see a correlation between when it's the time of the month um, like the day of and the whole time that I'm on it uh, I think that is honestly what's giving me a little bit of anxiety unfortunately I think that it really messes with my body but we did that and I came home and took a nap for like two and a half hours just I just like laid on the couch next to my husband while he played video games and slept because I just wasn't having it and I didn't I didn't sleep badly but I didn't sleep as long as I wanted to but I slept long enough that I shouldn't have been tired so I think that I'm just in a bad place emotionally and needed to just take a nap but I wanted to show you guys the book that I got at half price and then update you guys on my reading this is gonna be the last update for this vlog because I need to edit it tonight to get it up for tomorrow for Friday um, but yeah. I was just thinking that I uploaded my video early yesterday but I didn't. Yesterday was Wednesday, right? Today's Thursday. Whatever. Anyway, I got Monstrous, the comic Monstrous. This has been a comic that I have seen floating around a little bit on BookTube. This is like, I think G really likes this book. Um, pretty sure Jade has read it as well. But yeah, I've just heard a lot of good things about this when I posted it. Um, Sam from That Bookish Gamer said that she really liked it too. So it seems to be a beloved comic book. But the synopsis of it is about a girl who she is hunted all I know is she lives in a world with magic and she like survives a war a war and she's hunted let me just read it so set in an alternate world of art deco beauty and steampunk horror which is something that I really like I really like steampunk it tells the epic story of M Micah M-A-I-K-A half wolf a teenage survivor of a cataclysmic war between humans and their hated enemies the Arcanics which sounds like um, mages, so that kind of is pretty cool. In the face of oppression and terrible danger, Mika is both hunter and hunted, searching for answers about her mysterious past as those who seek to use her remain just one step behind, and all the while the monster within begins to awaken. Um, the only thing I really know about this is it's by Image Comics, which is one of my absolute favorite. There's hardly any books by Image that I don't like, um, as well as it's rated very mature. It's a very, very mature comic um, from what I have seen. 
uh, from reviews and stuff, it is very mature. I think it has violence. I don't know if it has sex. I think it has some sort of nudity in it, but it sounds like a comic that I'm really going to like. So I'm glad I got this. And I found it for like $5, which is groundbreaking in half price because for some fucking reason they want to charge you like an arm and a leg for it. And then for Beneath a Scarlet Sky, I'm on chapter 26, which is page 373. So I have about 150 pages. I'm going to bring probably the sculptor with me tonight to start that because I will finish this tonight at work. Um, I work by myself until like six and then after that I think I'm free. I'm, I'm hopefully going to go home early because I'm in so much pain that I, I just want to lay down. Um, but yeah, so I am almost done with this. I kind of stopped taking notes because it sort of started getting pretty repetitive and not really think, not repetitive, but nothing super important was happening. Um, which you think it would towards the end of the book, or maybe I'm just not, I don't really consider it like the biggest plot devices. Um, the guy that he follows around, the general, Hans Layers, is very confusing. He, I'm at the point now where Layers is kind of doing things where he's like the right hand of Hitler, like in the war in Italy, like that's what he does, that's his job. But he keeps doing these things that are like, really confusing to the story. He's kind of wishy-washy. I want to talk about them, but I don't want to spoil the book for anybody who wants to read it, but um, he's definitely a very interesting character, and I like him more than I like Pino. I think that he has a lot more depth to him than Pino does. I think this book is probably going to be a four-star read for me, and if you guys follow me on Instagram, I'm actually going to be reviewing books on my Instagram on IGTV from now on. If there's a book that I really, really, really genuinely like, I'm going to also put it on YouTube, but I'm going to try to review every single book that I read on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to be doing that as well. Um, you can find my Instagram in my description box. But yeah, like I said, it's just, it's not the worst book I've ever read. It's not bad by any means. I really like it. But the only other thing that I don't like is him and Anna, which you know this is going to happen, him and Anna, you know, start like a relationship. And the relationship is very weird and a lot of this book is really hard to read because like you know that he is kind of a spy you know that's sort of the premise of the book but the people in his life don't know that he is and their reactions to it are heartbreaking like when his little brother finds out like sees him with like, the Nazi armband on with like the swastika on it and like his dad doesn't really know what's going on because obviously they have to the least the least the fewer people you tell, the fewer people will spread, like, what's happening. So, in an effort to keep things really, like, close-knit, they're not telling anybody, like, what's going on. But, yeah, I just, I mean, I do like it. I do really, really like it. It's just not as breathtaking as everyone said it was. And I think it is because I'm not the biggest fan of the writing style. I think the writing style is sort of very simple. I mean, there are descriptions and, you know, a little bit of depth to stuff, but I feel like the actual writing style is just, it's very bland. There's not a whole lot of embellishment. I, I think I do like more embellished writing styles. I think that this is just plain, which is fine. A lot of people are going to like that, but for me, I think that's what's sort of taking away from it. I'm going to tally all of it up when I actually finish it before I do my review for it, but I think we're leaning towards a four because my enjoyment's not low, but it's not super high. So I, I'm thinking solid four, but yeah, like I said, I only have like 170 some pages left, 160 some pages left, which I'm going to do tonight. And then I'm going to start the sculptor. Give me one second and I will get it for you to show you what that's about. So this is The Sculptor. This is actually a book that I know a ton of people really, really like, and it is a huge comic book. Let's see. It is close to, it's 487 pages, so it's not quite 500, but I wanted to read it because I, I don't know, I've been wanting to read it. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's really fucking hard to find a comic that's 500 pages. So this is pretty close, and Sam did say in her video that it can be as close as you need it to be, um, as long as it's pretty close, like, no one's gonna hunt you down. I hope no one's gonna hunt me down. Um, this copy is, like, really messed up. Looks like somebody's dog got to it. But anyway, um, this book is about a man, young man, who kind of trades his... He, 
he seems to be like very empty it doesn't really have a whole lot going for him in his life and he's sort of missing something and he doesn't know what he's missing so he trades his I think trades his life um, with the devil and only has 200 days left to live or maybe he made like a bad bargain and that was what the bargain ended up being but he only has 200 days left to live but he, he can create or sculpt things with his hands out of any medium and on the cover of it there's a girl that he kind of has like sculpted out of a wall if you see that so it's like I guess it's a story about like what people really want like I guess it's like a heartfelt kind of story because he I guess isn't able to figure out what he really wants what brings meaning into his life anything like you know things like that um, I don't know a whole lot about it other than it's gotten amazing reviews like amazing 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 reviews but we'll see I don't know if it's like funny I think it's just really like a serious kind of comic but like I said I know a lot of people think that this is absolutely wonderful so I'm really excited to read it and start it tonight hopefully I'm able to finish Mini the Scarlet Sky at work. And then also I did my Newts, my Newts TBR, and I'm also doing, so I'm doing, what is this called? Tome Topathon this month. And then at the end of that, Booktubeathon starts. And Booktubeathon is, so it's like, Tome Topple is the first two weekends, first two weeks of July. And then the last week of July is Booktubeathon. And then um, the Newts happen, which is G's. Uh, readathon and I finally did my TBR for that so I'm gonna be like back to back to back because the book tubeathon and newts happen um, book tubeathon is the first I think it's like it's like a week so it's the last two days of July first five days of August I'm pretty sure I know she's putting up all this stuff today or in the next week or something like that and then the newt starts August 1st so I'm just like like drowning right now but I'm doing it to myself because I need to read the books on my shelves that I haven't read yet. I have so many of them. I think I have like 70 books. Out of the 400 and some books that I own, I've only not read 70 of them, and I need to sit down and actually read them. So for Newts, I actually have, I think I picked five subjects, so I have 15 books that I want to read. Um, I'll kind of show you guys now, although I'm going to go over my full TBR then. I got these super cool printables, which I'm really excited about, but I also printed off all of the like things that G made for people. So I have like my Newts examination sheet. Which I'm really excited about and then somebody actually did this like you can fill in the subject for each subject all the books that you're reading so I'm doing ancient runes astronomy charms divination and transfiguration those are the classes that I would have actually taken I thought about doing potions but I don't think I'd really take it um but I didn't sit my owls but I'm gonna sit my newts anyway because I like, I know people are like, oh, you have to sit your owls, and some people are sitting them, but I don't have time for that. I honestly don't. So in G's video, she said, you know, pick the subjects that you think you would have sat, and this can be like a practice round or whatever. So I'm going to do this anyway, and then next year I'm going to do my owls, since it's going to be a yearly thing that people are doing. And I'm really excited either way, so whatever. People can judge me if they're mad that I didn't do the owls. I don't care. But that's it for this update. I need a shower. It is... 1257 and I have to leave at 2 and it takes me like an hour and a half to wash my hair I'm not even joking so I'm gonna go do that and I will get this video uploaded so you guys are gonna see this tomorrow afternoon and yeah either way I hope you guys enjoy this vlog I know it's been all over the place it's gonna be a bitch to edit too because some of it's on my actual camera some of it's just like on my phone or on my computer and I gotta figure out what dates are for what and I, ugh, I hope I'm able to leave early tonight because I don't feel good and I have things I have to do but either way I hope you guys like this vlog let me know down below the book that you read or the books that you read if you did better than I did for the first week of Tom Topolathon um yeah just let me know how you're doing but I will see you guys in my next video which will be on Monday and I'm actually really excited about the video that I have for plan have for plan have planned for Monday so I will see you guys then